Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 3. You can find this on YouTube. You will not find it on Prime Video, and this is a recap. And I hope you hang in there with me, because this is going to be a really difficult episode to recap, and in a second you'll find out why. Let's get started. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know whether I should continue to do these recaps or not. All right, here we go. Now, remember, in order to be on the program, you have to submit a landscape and that the judges look at it and they decide whether you should be on the program or not. This is our first landscape. I know, I know. What are we going to do with this? <laughs> We're going to look at it and sit with it and breathe in and breathe out and accept the image. That is my all I can say about this. Now we will go on to artist number two. Artist number two is a much more conventional landscape and in this case it's a cityscape. Looks like this person draws quite, quite well um, there's a lot of black going on in these mixes here, so that dulls everything down a bit. But it does make the reds kind of pop, and there's a lot of action. It looks like it's a fire, a response to a fire, perhaps, which is, um, which is interesting. You know, what this person's done is, is not concentrated necessarily on the land, but on human activities. And I don't know that we've seen that before, so, so far we have two very different entries. Get ready, hold on. You might have to buckle in, <laughs> actually. Here's number three. Number three is a surrealist painter. Um, and I'm not opposed to surreal paintings at all. I do a lot of tablescapes and, and I put little animals in them and, and different things. But this is, this, is, this is about as surreal as it gets. You can tell the references from art history. Again, we have three incredibly different painters. And like I said, stay buckled in because here's the, th the fourth. Oh my gosh. All right, here's the fourth landscape. This is a very tonal kind of drawing, I guess. Drawing of green hills with some kind of structure at the very top of it. We'll get a closer look of, at it here. Um, yeah, it almost looks like a print, doesn't it? Looks like printmaking to me, but I don't, I don't, I don't know that it is. I don't think it is. Um, this is the most conventional of the landscapes that we've seen so far, but is very unconventional by the standards of the pro program. And now let's look at the next one. This is definitely an urban scape. I like the perspective. You know, you're looking down at a bridge. Usually people will have you looking up at a bridge, but in this case, you're looking down at the roadway. So I really like the design elements of this and sort of the illustration that's going on. Very dominant in terms of grays and blacks. And this is a very dull painting. And I don't mean dull in terms of subject. I'm talking about dull colors. Everything is grayed down quite a bit. And I think the person who's making these mixes, these gray mixes, um, just isn't incorporating a lot of color into them. And now here's our last one. Our last one is probably the most conventional of the, of the paintings that we've seen, um, well, in this episode for sure, because this is a complete, completed painting. It's an interesting thing because what this person has done has given us the um, landscape as it's reflected back to us from the windows. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, so I like that this is inventive and, um, and we haven't seen anything like this on the program before. Okay, where are they today? They are at West Reservoir. And in a second, we're gonna see a view from the pods. So it's a sunny day, which is a really good thing. Oftentimes we'll get a gray, very gray day with gray sky and gray water. But today we have sun, so that's gonna give us a lot of shadows and that should provide us with some shapes. But you're going to have to kind of invent a landscape here because it's, it's very, very horizontal. So you better have some vertical elements going on. See how the vertical elements are really spaced out there, almost like one, two, three. So you got to do something with that. It's, it's too symmetrical in terms of the spacing. So um, 
uh, and I don't know if, people, if they're going to include the dock or not. We'll, we'll find out just in a second. Here are their pods, which gives them some degree of comfort, keeps the wind and the rain away, but, uh, you know, not the, not the cold. It, it could be a very cold day for all we know, and we don't know. They're going to paint for four hours. They can use, they can paint for five if they don't take a lunch break, and during this time they are interviewed, so there are inter interruptions as well. Now, four hours in, which is really probably five and a bit more, we get to see the final paintings. And only three of these people will go forward to the semifinals of this episode, and only one will go forward to the semifinals of the season. So this is what our first painter did. This is the person who did that reflective glass. We saw the landscape in the reflection. And of all the people presenting today, this is probably the person well, I shouldn't say, you know what, I'm going to reserve judgment because you're going to be very, it's just so surprising. And I mean, it shouldn't be surprising the results of today because we saw going in how very different each of the painters was. But I think this was, a, this is a good composition. It got rid of that huge horizontal of, of water that was in front. Uh, I think, I think they've done a good job. There was a strange buoy in front, and I'm not so sure that that was needed. Maybe it was. I'm 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 not sure. I'll I'll reserve judgment on that until until we get further into the program. All right. Here's our second painter. This is the person who is a surrealist. So she's invented landscape and created a clock and a, a probably an, I think it's an egret or maybe a great blue heron going above. And if you like surrealism, then this is your jam. I don't respond to it in terms of what she painted because I'm open to that. I don't mind that at all. I wouldn't mind a Tyrannosaurus Rex coming around the corner. But what I'm not really wild about is the dullness of color. Now, she's not a colorist, and I, I get it. I get it. Um, you know, this is... And I'm not talking about soft color. I'm talking about, once again, that sort of corrupting influence that black has if it gets in your uh, mixes. Once it gets in your mixes... You can't get it out. And when I look at certain spots in the painting, I want to put a color spot of value in that is bright. Because overall, this is a very cold painting in terms of temperature, and it's also very dull in terms of color. And many, many people like that. Here's the next one up. Um, this was also strange to me in terms of color. And you'll probably ask me why, because you've, you've, if you've watched my recaps, you know I love a color value swap out. Nothing I like better than a color value swap out, but not pink in the water. I don't understand that. I, I, I'm, I would put a color spot of value in the water, but a color spot of value is not the same as incorporating it in, in the, in all throughout the water and, and in the painting. But the sky, she's a, this is a great job on the sky. I'll say that. And I think it was smart to put a piece of the pod. A piece of the pod? <laughs> That's fun to say. Because that gives us, we, we start to get some sense of distance here. And I think that's one of the real challenges with landscape, is can you create distance? And in this case, that was a challenge because of how horizontal everything is. Now the next one, I, I don't know how to talk about this. I love big, bold color. I like the brush strokes. The person is not working from the elbow down. They're putting their whole arm in. And... You know, you open up a, a tube of paint and, and it's delicious. This is just delicious in terms of paint and application. But does it, does it fulfill the brief? Is this a landscape? Not for me. Maybe for you. And I'm absolutely puzzled as to how this could possibly take four hours to do. Because I would sit down and do this probably in about seven minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I... I'm, I'm absolutely baffled. So you, you see why I called it a strange episode? Here comes the next one, and the next one is a collage. And we've seen a lot of collage artists on this program. I like the collage artists a lot. I think they tend to be playful. They tend to be really good at incorporating pattern and color. And um, that's, I find that fascinating, so hats off. So, um, but, but, um, it's very, you know, it's very, very flat. And that's not because it's a collage. We've seen other collages which have provided a lot of distance and space, but it's just not happening here. And that has to do with, I suspect, probably the value range. I just think it's, it's that. And that's okay. 
you know, so far this one holds together pretty well for me. So I'm not, I'm not unsatisfied with this. Here's the last one. And this is, um, this is a painting. Um, it, it's very unorganized for me. Um, uh, I like the color spots of value. Thank you. Because I want my greens and then I want some, you know, red hit to go in there. Color spot of value. There's movement. But overall, as a composition, for me, it's really disorganized, and, and I don't know what to do with that. Maybe you do. I don't know. So for me, this was not a really, really strong episode, and that's surprising because we've seen some episodes where absolutely everybody is a great painter, and we've seen some episodes where it's about half and half. But in this particular episode, um, it, all the artists left me wanting quite a bit. Now we'll get to the final judging. The final judging probably happens around four or five o'clock in the afternoon based on the light and the shadows going on here. So it's been a really, really long day and exhausting because they've had to travel here. You know, uh, just this is not an ideal venue for the kind of painter I am. I like to get lost in the in painting and it would have had lots of interruptions and you're not in your regular environment. So hats off to these people. It's a real challenge. Here's our first finalist. This was the painting that I found somewhat disorganized, but it does show a sense of place. You know, they were on the waterfront and that's being shown here. I really don't have a lot to say about it other than that. Now, now let's look at the painting that, that the same artist did in order to be on the program. So this was what he does when he doesn't have time constraints. Considerably more detail in the foliage. M much more organized overall, but, but, um, but just looks unfinished to me. Okay, here's the next one. This is a surrealist As painter. I was saying, so this, this is, is what she, she did today, which we talked about earlier, which I find, um, you know, just not exciting as a colorist. But, but she did a good job, and, it, and it's consistent with the kind of style that she has. Now we're going to look at the painting that was juried in for her to be on the program, and it's consistent with what she did today. You recognize the same color palette. She puts in more detail when she has more time. And, you know, you either like this kind of um, subject or you don't. I'm, I'm just, there it is. All right, let's move on. All right, here's our last contestant. This was the one that I kind of favored, which had the reflection of the landscape in the windows. I still really like it. Um, again, we're not talking about a colorist here. There's a lot of black, a lot of dullness going on. But I think they came today and they did represent a sense of place. So I think that was a, a good job. Now, which one will the judges choose to go forward? Well, hashtag Joe is always wrong. Um, I, at this point, I, I really thought it would be this painter, but um, but the judges like something different, and they like something that's unusual. So knowing that, we can maybe guess who's going to win. There are all the uh, finalists lined up there. It's really hard to see, though. I wasn't able to get a good shot of the painting that they have at the entry and then what they did today, so I had to slice it up into individual slides. I apologize for that and hope the next recap I can go back to the usual and show both at the same time. So we're about to find out who the winner is. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, well, this winner is going to stand out when we get to the semifinals. This is only episode three. Yep, this is the winner. So this is only episode three. So uh, we have three artists in the final, and I think when we get to the final, there'll be six altogether. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.